Good morning to you, Tim here, Raging Mufon's coach. Here's a roundup, the weekly roundup of exercises myself and Michaelis are covering, and we'd like you to practice in your own time. All resistance bands, broomsticks, that sort of stuff, easy exercises. All you need is a bit of space and a bit of time and a number of repetitions and you are good to go. What I suggest you do, as always with uh, resistance bands exercises, wear some lightweight gloves. Reason being, you don't have to, but if you do a lot of repetitions with a lot of extension, it can cut into your hands a little bit. And I actually want to train today and tomorrow and the next day. So a pair of gloves just uh, gets over that mild discomfort. Okay, so basically a number of presses, leg presses, chest presses, arm presses. You can do them sitting up or you can do them lying down. If you do them lying down, I would suggest you have your legs bent because that means the small of your back is flat on the ground and you've got a more stable position to push from. So I'll demonstrate it sitting up to start with. So load it up with the, the band round about where the base of your shoulder blades are. And we've got a double arm press. We've got a single arm press. We've got a single arm press this side and a fly. So a fly press. And we've got a double arm fly. And with a double arm fly, what I'm reaching for is I'm reaching to at least 180 degrees, so it's horizontal, and I can feel my shoulder blades pressing together at the back. And then when I'm pushing through, I can feel it into the deltoids in my biceps area a little bit, and I'm separating the, the shoulder blades at the back, okay? Lying down, I can do the same thing. So nice, stable position, and I can do the double arm press. And really, I'm reaching up, and you can do it from flat on the ground or uh, like a, a crunch position. I prefer that position, but whichever suits. So a nice, flat, stable platform. I'm just pointing where I'm going. Then I can do the single arm press, and this hand is either on the chest or it's out to the fly position, out to the side. Slightly different pr uh, press or pull, and then you can do the fly. Okay, you can feel the stretch through your chest when you do that. Nice and slow, nice and controlled. I think we're doing 15 reps. You can either do a number of reps or do a period of time. So 15 reps or 30 seconds or 40 seconds. Okay, and then you've got your single arm and you've got your double arm. So your three presses there, okay? Really good, and you can do these sitting in front of the television or having a conversation. So you can multitask. The next one, the leg presses. So you can do these once again, um, single band or double band. If it goes single band around your leg, then take a bite out of the band. And when you sit back, put your elbows on the ground. So you're pushing away, okay? And once again, I prefer to have this leg uh, knee, um, bent so the flat of the small of my black back is on the floor a little bit more resistance put your foot in what i call a stirrup okay so i've got two a double band once again elbows on the floor small of the back in contact with the ground so i bend my second leg you could have it straight if you want i like that myself and then i'm pushing away now what i can do Keep my elbows on the ground as it comes back i can give it more of a pull here so i'm getting more of a hip flex exercise out of it so you see i'm just loading it by letting it come back under the momentum of the the band okay that's the way of doing that so anything i do on the left i also do on the right i'm going to go double band again or foot in the stirrup and i'm going to push away again and i'm pushing in a straight line Okay, so I'm not pushing out to the side, I'm nice and controlled, pushing a straight line. Okay, that's single leg press, double leg press, same again, I can either do it single band if you like, push away, or double band, feet in the stirrup, get it nice and central, central. if I bring my legs back onto the small of my back, is on the floor, elbows on the ground, 
and pushing your weight. Now I need to push a little bit higher and you'll, you'll feel this, it's more stable. If I want to increase the resistance, separate the legs a little bit, okay, and a little bit, a little bit harder, so you find the resistance that suits you, okay? Okay, you'll probably find it easy to have both legs together. Anyway, whatever works for you on that. The last one that Michaelis showed us yesterday is the seated row. And once again, you can do single bend. And what I suggest again is take what I call a bite out of the band. And then we're rowing from this position, the seated row. Well, the one I particularly like is feet in the stirrup again, feet together, if you can see that. I'm sitting up and I'm basically neutral spine, head up, back straight, looking where I'm going, and I'm rowing to the chest, okay? Once again, don't rush it, get full range of movement. So find the situation where when you get to this point here, it's just pulling, so it's not slack, it's just pulling on your shoulders. So you go full range of movement, stretching me out a little bit to pull to there, okay? Nice, definite, positive pull, big pull, Slow, yeah? Fast in, slow out. Fast in, slow out. So you get the benefit of what's called the concentric, where you're uh, tensing the muscles, and the eccentric. So it's basically, you're contracting the muscles and they're shortening, in this case of the biceps, or they're lengthening, okay? But you're getting the benefit out of a full range of movement rather than just pulling and letting it just ping away. So nice and controlled movements. Slow and controlled will give you greater gains over the longer period. Okay, brilliant. Talk to you soon. Hey, good morning everybody. Tim Smith here, Raging Mouflons. This is the early May segment on what I'm covering this week. I've done the bit for Michaelis earlier on in terms of the floor exercises. There's some new exercises I'm covering or developments of exercises I'm covering with the pipes. I mean this pipe rather than this pipe. It could be a paddle, it could be a broomstick or a straight stick, a ski pole, whatever. But you get the idea. So we're going to start it all off as per normal with the pulse raiser. We're going to do the star jump with the various different variations. You know, we've got the legs and then we've got different variations of arm movements, so we're not just warming ourselves up aerobically, we're also warming up the shoulders and the hips in different planes of movement. The slightly new exercises this week are what I'm calling an overhead arc. Now you're used to what I call the take that, but if you take that movement further round, so this ends up behind the hip and I'm sort of reaching out that way, it's a frontal plane exercise, but I'm taking the stretch a little bit further so I can really feel this in my oblique there, my lat at the back, my tricep, and actually I can feel it in, yeah, a bit of a leg stretch as well. Good core exercise, straight up to that position, nice and big, biggest circle you can make, biggest arc you can make, just increasing that range of movement, increasing that flexibility, increasing the stretch. We'll call that the overhead arc. Okay, the next one is a kneeling hip flexor. Now, it doesn't matter when you paddle in a dragon boat whether you paddle left foot forward, right foot forward, both legs forwards. Forget that for a minute. This is a hip flexor exercise, but we need to kneel down when we're doing it. So, in this case, I would be paddling or kneeling inside uh, leg forward, but it doesn't really matter. The important thing is the hip flexor side of things. So from here, we're going up and over, up and back. We're just opening up the hips. Okay? That's all it is. If you did a clean and press with a weight bar in the gym, the way you'd teach it, you'd go, imagine I've got a weight bar, you go up to there and then press away. And what you're actually doing on this up piece is you've got a triple extension. You're opening up the hips, the knees, and the ankles. So this is basically doing the same thing. I'm opening up the joint in order for me to get forward. So that's principally what this exercise is all about rather than which foot you've got forward when you sit in a dragon boat. So don't get confused by that. 
Okay, next one is going to be um, two ones for the two exercises for the shoulders. I'll just watch the light here. Start in this position. So I've got knuckles facing upwards. I'm going to rotate the stick around, catch it with the other hand, and you end up with a situation where you can externally rotate the shoulder. You see what I mean? That direction. A movement we don't practice too much. So all I want to do, once I've got that situation with this thumb downwards, apply some light pressure. Light pressure, really important. I'm just opening up the joint, stretching the joint, okay? Once again, increasing flexibility and range of movement. Release after 10 to 15 seconds. Catch the pipe, knuckles up, and watching the light again, rotate round and applying a bit of pressure against the outside of my arm. And just once again, opening up that joint, okay? 10 to 15 seconds, do that a few times. Moving on, another less travelled area in terms of shoulder mobility, just run it across my chest, it could be a paddle, and just prise my arm away, okay? Just stretch it a little bit, just put it slightly away from the back. Not painful. There we go, slight, just increase the stretch, increase the stretch. And then the other side, obviously, same again, everything you do on one side, do on the other side. So just like, just open up that range of movement. Don't overdo it, just gentle pressure will do it. It's a stretch. Okay, that'll do. I think we've got two more, let me just check my list. Back lever, kneeling hip flex, in fact, that's it. The last one is the ball exercise. You may call this the teacup exercise. We need two balls for today, but the first one I'll just show you is this, uh, teacup or I call it the helix. So you from here in your hand, go under your shoulder, up, over, and rotate back forward, okay? You see, I'm describing a figure of eight. I've got a whole series of exercises just using balls. And I'll cover those later on. But I wanna start you off with the basic ones and we'll go from there. That's the helix and I've got three or four exercises that I'm gonna cover this afternoon, but that's the basic one. Just get it through up and over. And if you see, I'm mobilising the shoulder, but I'm also, as I come to here, I'm also mobilising the hip, because I've got to lean back a little bit. So it's a shoulder mobility and a hip mobility exercise. Anyway, that's all for today. They're the basic range of exercises, plus the ones earlier I did with uh, McAllis's exercises, the floor exercises with the resistance bands. Have a good day, and we'll catch you later. Cheers.